Oh, hello. Cheeky, you've caught me in the bedroom. You're an early riser. I just woke up early because I'm going to go downstairs and prepare some biscuits. Just let me slip into something a bit more comfortable. I'll meet you down there. <laughs> Okay, first things first, let's put the kettle on. All right, so today we're gonna to be making biscuits, melting moments, brandy snaps, and Viennese whirls. All three are gonna be absolutely beautiful. Just ready for when the family wake up to have with a cup of tea. Okay, so I've measured out my ingredients the night before. You've got the recipes on the course resources. I'm going to start with Vini's Worlds. So what we need to do, so it's a simple shortbread rubbed together. There's no liquid in there. It's fat, it's flour, it's corn flour, and it's going to make it really, really short. Okay, so I've got my sugar. I've got a touch of vanilla in there. I've got margarine in there. So you've got to think about the properties of these biscuits. If we're gonna use butter, when butter gets hard at the room temperature, that's what the biscuit's gonna be like. I've used a nice soft stalk, soft margarine, icing sugar in there, and then I've got a mixture of plain flour and corn flour. So this is gonna be super short. So looking over your notes, it's basically an all-in-one mix rubbed together and I'm gonna just rub that fat into that flour and it's gonna come together like a really soft paste, which this type of biscuit is ideal for piping and making either Viennese fingers or as Miss Kipling does, Viennese whirls. Just mixing it. I can't overwork that gluten because there's no liquid in there that's gonna develop that gluten. All I want is a nice soft paste that's really pipeable. And yes, I take my hat off to Mr. Kipling. He's opted to doing the Viennese whirls over the fingers, but the fingers are traditionally dipped in a chocolate or some sort of glaze as a finishing technique. So this is super soft, super silky. This is ready now for the piping bag. So I'm going to scoop it out. I've prepared the piping bag here with a star shaped nozzle inside. I've used a measuring jug just to support it and hold it as I put in my mixture. All right, as you can see here as well, I've invested in a new spatula. And now what we want to do here is we need to now pipe this shortbread mixture onto our tray. So what I've done is I've prepared my tray with some baking paper. And because we're all important about consistency, what I've done is I've drawn some lines with a, a marker on the, this side of my paper, and I'm gonna turn it over so I've got a, a guideline for when I do my piping. If you to bake it on that side, what you'd find is the marker would come through onto your biscuits, which you don't want. Okay, so very, very important that you've creamed this mixture enough that it's soft enough to pipe, otherwise your piping bag's gonna be very hard, it's gonna split, okay? And again, remember, these Viennese whirls, it's two biscuits sandwiched together with a buttercream and jam filling. So I need to make sure that I've got equal number of biscuits that will sandwich together as one. What I'm gonna do is, as my paper's down, for my Viennese whirls. I'm gonna start in the middle, go around my outside, and then bring up my piping nozzle. So I get that lovely, nice definition, nice whirl as I'm piping. So it's important here that after I've piped, 
I've put them in the fridge so they can chill, which is going to help maintain that definition as they bake. And what I've done is I've set my oven to 190 degrees, as it says on your recipe, ready to receive these biscuits. So they're my Viennese whirls. I've got four little lines here, which I'm going to pipe along for my Viennese fingers. And it's important here that you apply a nice even pressure as you're piping. And very much like when we did brandy snap, when we did macaron, sorry, I'm going to use a bit of water to push down my mixture and ensure that it's not got little peaks on top. Okay. So I've chilled these, beat these biscuits down. I'm going to put them in the oven, 190 degrees, probably for about 12 to 15 minutes. They should be nice and golden brown and they'll be really super short. Okay, so next we'll start with the brandy snap. We've got equal quantities of butter, golden syrup, sugar and plain flour. Well, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to melt my sugar, my syrup and my butter together. I'm going to give it a quick tickle in the microwave. That sugar and fat's nicely melted together. I'm going to put that together in a bowl. All right, and the beauty about doing it in the microwave, I don't have to worry about it burning or reducing. But then I'm going to add in that flour. And essentially, this is just going to make a, a nice paste, which I'm then going to chill down and form into my biscuit mix from brandy snacks. Now you'll notice here we're using the melting method for our biscuits. All right, we've, we've started with the rubbing in. Now here's the, the melting method and we're going to finish with the creaming method. So you can see there it's coming away from the sides. That needs to chill so I can nicely form it. You could, if you've made a, a, a mould for like the length of a twill, spread this into the twill mould so it becomes nice and thin. But that's about ready. I'm going to chill it down and then we're going to bake them. All right, so while those brandy snaps chill, I'm going to start by creaming together my fat and my sugar from my melting moments. So very much like the Victoria sponge, we're going to be using the creaming method. I'm going to turn my mixture on, cream together with fat and with sugar. Once that's come together, I'm going to add, again, very similar to our Victoria sponge, just a little dash of that flour in there to help with the emulsification of our eggs. But it's very similar to a cake making method because it's creamed butter and sugar, egg inside and then flour. But you've got to remember here, as soon as that egg gets added to that flour and it gets mixed, it's going to start developing that gluten. All right, so I put a little bit of flour in there just to help bind my butter. I'm going to slowly add my egg. All right, so again, like our sponge is creamed together, I'm going to add in some sifted flour but I'm going to fold it together. So the beauty of these, they're called meltaways, melting moments, is what they're also known as because they literally melt in the mouth. Okay, so my melting moment mix has come together. It's a very thick dough-like consistency, very much like a classic biscuit mix. And what I've done here is, is I've got some oats, which I'm going to rub it together. That is my um, Viennese whirls coming out. I'll take them out. Mm, beautiful, look at that, nice and golden brown. Brown on the bottom, quite light on the top. I'm gonna let them cool. They're gonna be ready for filling later on. Back to these meltaways. Now again, these can stand alone as individual biscuits. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna 
divide them into two little biscuits and again sandwich them together with a buttercream. It is important for consistency of these biscuits. I've got some jumbo oats here. I've rolled them into a lovely sausage. I'm gonna, I want identical numbers so I can sandwich them together. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the middle, I'm gonna cut it in half, I'm gonna cut that in half, I'm gonna cut that in half, I'm gonna keep going down, cutting each proportion into half, and I'm gonna know that I've got equal sizes and the right number to be able to sandwich these biscuits together. And once they're ready, I'm gonna take a little ball of the mixture, just coat it in the oats, so it's nice and oaty, nice and delicious, and then that can just sit and pat down nicely on my baking tray. <clears throat> so that's the melt aways portioned up. I could have been pernickety, I could have measured and weighed each one that's identical to make sure I've got the correct portion sizes, but they're gonna go into the oven 150 degrees for, again, about 13 to 15 minutes. Just take note here, I've uh, spaced them nice and evenly here because they are gonna just puff slightly and because they're creamed, they're gonna puff up. They're not gonna spread too much because they're more fat than sugar. All right, so Vini's fingers, Vini's whirls on the baking tray to cool. We're gonna just put them over on the side just to let them cool. I'm gonna start preparing my brandy snaps. So our mixture at the moment should have cooled enough that it's quite a stiff, pliable dough. So out of here, I can probably get about four nice balls of brandy snap. But the key here is to make sure that they're not too close together because they will spread like nobody's business. Because they've got a high sugar content, that's what causes the dough to spread. Okay, so I'm gonna put two on a tray. I'm gonna bake them quite a hot oven, probably about 180, maybe a touch higher because I'm not cooking on a fan assisted oven. But also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prepare the same dough, but I'm gonna use less sugar because what we were looking to do this week in our tutorial is we were gonna go into the kitchens again, like we did with the breads, and we're gonna do some biscuit experiments to see how those categories of biscuits can change by the properties of those ingredients. All right, so I'll, I'll get them on the tray, I'll get them baking, I'll load these up on another tray, and I'm gonna prepare some with less sugar, just to show you what's gonna happen. All right, so I'm gonna check these brandy snaps. Oh yes, beautiful. These are ready. The ones that were just slightly below in the oven need a few minutes longer. You've got to remember I'm not in a fan assisted oven. And what you need here is I'm gonna show you a roll that you can do the traditional brandy snap that are filled with a, a cream inside. I'm gonna show you a traditional brandy snap basket. Now it's important here, as it is with twills, that you work very quickly. Now what will happen is, because they've got a very high sugar content, they will be very, very soft, as you can see there, but they will set very, very hard, very, very quickly. All right, and I like to call what you need here with some brandy snap hands. You need to have a bit of resistance to heat to be able to pick them up while they're still a little bit hot, while they're a little bit soft, and be able to mold them, okay? And I've done many, many of these in my career, but here you could use a spatula, but you can see there, look, already that's getting a bit firmer, getting a bit harder, so I'm working quickly. If it does get too hard for you, all you need to do is you just need to pop it back in the oven, warm it through, and with any sort of drop biscuit, like the brandy snap, it will soften back up and you can remould it. Exactly the same for twills. So I'm gonna leave that setting round there. I'm gonna leave that just setting over my glass. I'm gonna wait for my other brandy snaps just to finish off cooking. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna start putting in my second batch, but remember, they've got half the amount of sugar. I wanna show you what's gonna to happen to those that don't have that sugar content. All right, so I'll take out this second set of brandy snaps. Beautifully golden, beautiful air bubbles in there. 
but I'm also going to take out these that are ready that have had 10 grams of sugar as opposed to 25 and you can see here look they've gone very very soft they haven't spread enough because of that sugar content in there so referring back to that theory that we were looking at the sugar content is very 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 important okay we'll look over here at these brandy snaps that i took out a minute ago very hard very crisp beautiful this one here i can remove from its tube and i can fill it with a nice chantilly cream whatever you like inside what we're going to do now is i'm going to show you how to make your own piping bag so i've been using these little blue piping bags and being the pastry chef that i am i like to seat one of these under my pillow but what you can do at home is you can take a piece of greaseproof paper and you can fold it in half and then what you'll get is a nice triangle and then with that point facing towards you this tip opposite this point here opposite the the point of the triangle is going to be the tip of your piping bag and what you do is you just roll that round keeping these corner pieces as they fold round at that opposite point and there you get that beautiful cone shape which you can then fold those corner pieces round and that easy as pie makes a lovely hat for a party and what I'm going to do here with this I'm going to add a secret ingredient a little bit of jam going into these beanies worlds when the kids wake up when the missus wakes up and they have one of these for their, their morning coffee with their morning drink. It's going to be a lovely little surprise in the middle. So I've got my piping bag full of jam. It's important that you've knocked that jam back and beaten it to make it nice and smooth. I've got my buttercream. I've got my Viennese whirls. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to top one side. And then we're just going to flip the other side over when it's ready. And then now, with my piping nozzle, I'm gonna pipe on my buttercream to that biscuit. Just keep your nozzle as low as possible so it gets a nice radius on that buttercream. And then here, you could do a, a zigzag if you like. You could do three little rosettes on there if you like. And then here's for that secret ingredient, a little dash of jam that's going to act as that little surprise when the guests bite into these Viennese fingers or Viennese wheels. And then I'm going to put the tops on. You can see there. A nice lovely little rosette around the outside. I'll put the top of this one on there. A bit of the jams poking through. Just lovely. And then I'm going to finish with a little bit of icing sugar. As that finishing technique. And there we are, Mr. Kipling. Eat your heart out. Beautiful. All right, so melting moments ready. We can see here we've got just a slight colorization on those biscuits. I'm going to let them chill, but eventually what's going to happen to them is I'm going to sandwich them together. We could leave them as standalone biscuits um, it's up to you really what you want to do. Melting moments, nice and cool. Very, very important here that they're not hot when putting your, your buttercream or your filling on there because it will melt straight away. I'm going to leave some plain. You can see here by this one, nice and soft, nice and crumbly, nice and delicious. That's what we're looking for, a nice, soft, crumbly, 
light cake and that's what you get from the creaming method well, i'm just going to apply just a little bit of this buttercream to our melt aways now your recipes calls for a passion fruit buttercream you can achieve that by slowly adding about 20 percent ratio of passion fruit puree just emulsifying that into the buttercream as you whisk in it in here this is just a basic bog standard buttercream with a bit of milk and that'll do nicely okay like well like i said i'm going to leave some of these plain that's how they can come i've got a little bit of icing sugar that again i can just dust over the top just as a finishing technique beautiful and i'll apply these over here with the rest of my bakes and there we have it three delicious biscuits three different methods of making absolutely astonishing the kids will love it when they wake up the wife will have one of them with a cup of coffee in the morning it's beautiful this has been phil's kitchen thank you very much for joining me it's been a pleasure to see you all again and tune in next time.